Hold on, sugar. Daddy's got a sweet tooth tonight. Directed by Chuck Russell, the zany and wacky 1994 superhero comedy The Mask tells the story of Stanley Ipkiss, a down-on-his-luck bank clerk who lives in Edge City, played by comedy legend Jim Carrey, who is a social outcast downtrodden by society as he is looked upon as being a weak pushover. However, one night Ipkiss finds a mysterious mask in the ocean, and when he puts the mask on, he becomes a super-powered crime-fighting being known as the Mask. His hyperactive demeanour and iconic green bald head and giant teeth, along with cartoon antics, cemented Jim Carrey into the mainstream superstardom in the 90s, and also made the movie iconic and a well-loved product of its time. However, do we know all there is to know about this wacky character? Is there more that we can learn about the mask? Are the mask's roots as playful and as innocent as they are in the movie? What is the story behind the strange yellow suit? And what would it have been like had the movie not starred the legendary Cameron Diaz as the love interest? So all this and more we are going to check out today as we look into 10 things that you may not know about the mask. Smoking! Yeah, I really can't do a Jim Carrey impersonation. Number 10, based on the violent as hell comic books. Created by Mike Richardson in 1982 and published by Dark Horse Comics and inspired by the Joker with a Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde twist, there are many differences between the mask comics and movie. For example, Stanley Yipkus comes into contact with the mask in an antique store while looking for a gift for his girlfriend Kathy in which the mask seems to talk to him. And once he puts the mask on, he turns into a green, bald-headed super being who causes havoc. And I'm not kidding, the mask in the comic book absolutely destroys people in many gruesome panels as he earns the nickname Big Head. This was one gruesome comic, and as the series went on, it didn't even revolve around Ipkus anymore, but instead other people who would come into contact with the mask resulting in all manner of chaos and extreme violence. Other than its copious amounts of carnage, I think the difference between comic and movie is the character Stanley Ipkiss, as he is the main character in the movie, but in the comics it's the green super-powered big head being who appears when a wearer puts on the mask who is the main focus. In other words, the mask in the comic books turns its wearers into green-headed murderers! Number 9. Cameron Diaz had to audition 12 times for the part. No one should ever be lonely. A young 22-year-old Cameron Diaz played the movie's love interest, Tina Carlisle. And damn, when I saw this movie as a little kid, did I ever have the biggest crush on her. And as we all know, from there, Diaz would become a big-time celebrity. However, originally the producers wanted former playmate Anna Nicole Smith in the role of Tina Carlisle, which would have been all kinds of weird. But Diaz was spotted while leaving a modelling agency, and after her many auditions, finally landed the part that shot her into superstardom just seven days before filming was to commence. And so, because of this movie, The Mask created many people's first fandom crushes. Number 8. The movie was going to be more violent. We don't want someone to care. Well. The original script was more true to the comics it was based on, with the mask ruthlessly killing people. But by director Chuck Russell's own admission, the script was changed when Jim Carrey got involved. Carrey jumped at the chance to play the role, as he thought it would be fun to mimic some of his favourite cartoon characters, such as the Whistling Wolf. <laughs> 
so it was decided to base the tone of the movie around Carrie's fun, playful comedy style, which did go well theatrically. And Carrie even contributed greatly to the comedy aspect. For example, that scene where the mask pulls out a condom out of his pocket, followed by the line, Sorry, wrong pocket. <laughs> that was actually ad-libbed by Carrie. However, I do regret that we are yet to have a movie version of The Mask that is more true to the comics. Number 7. The Story Behind the Yellow Suit The most iconic imagery associated with the movie is that of The Mask wearing his iconic yellow suit and fedora. However, in the film he only wears the suit the one time, in the Coco Bongo Club. It's kind of like Beetlejuice's black and white stripy suit in that he hardly wears it in the movie, but it's the look that everyone associates the character with. Seriously, go back and watch The Mask. He only wears the suit for probably like 10 minutes in the entire movie. However, the iconic suit came from a place very personal to Jim Carrey, his mother. You see, Carrey's mother made him the banana yellow suit to wear when he started his stand-up comedy routine. And I guess that someone in the production saw the old footage of Carrie wearing the yellow suit and thought, hey, we totally have to have the mask character wear that. Either way, it's an iconic look. And now I can't imagine the mask wearing anything but the yellow threads. Speaking of the Coco Bongo Club, the popular Edge City night spot in the movie got its name from Jim Carrey's real life Mexican nightclub, which is also called Coco Bongo. Number six, there was going to be a mask too. And no, I'm not talking about the god-awful 2005 abomination Son of Mask Eva. I wouldn't poke that with an ugly stick. But in fact, after the massive success of The Mask, the studio started making plans on a direct sequel, The Mask 2. A few years ago, the angry video game nerd pointed out an article in Nintendo Power Magazine, which offered contestants the opportunity to star in The Mask 2. But I'm guessing the project fell through due to the lack of carry. He was offered $10 million to star in the superhero comedy sequel, but he turned the offer down. I mean, after all, during the mid-90s, Carrie had become a big deal. But that said though, he has recently stated that he would now go back to the comical world of The Mask and return in a sequel, and that he's in the mood to revisit some of his old movies. So who knows, maybe one day we will get that true Mask sequel that we all wanted. As long as Stanley Ipkiss has that massive Jim Carrey beard, I'm totally sold. Number 5, there was an animated series. Yes, from 1995 to 1997, there was a Mask animated series distributed by Warner Brothers. And this cartoon was just as insane and as hyperactive as the movie. In fact, even more so, it really turned up the wacky meter. Okay. Now, I would say that the cartoon has been largely forgotten and that no one talks about it. But I said that in my previous episode about the Jumanji animated series, which seemed to really piss a lot of people off, and have a lot of people say, no, hang on, I remember that show, thank you very much. <laughs> so if you remember the Mask cartoon, hey, that's perfectly fair enough. But to me personally, with my own social surroundings and peers, no one ever talks about the Mask cartoon anymore, it has been forgotten. Once again, in my own social surroundings. Oh, itchy ear. Woo. When I was a kid, I didn't really like this cartoon. I thought it was too weird and too over the top, but I've come to appreciate it as I've gotten older because I think it's a cartoon more aimed at adults with adult humor. This time, the mask religiously wears his yellow suit and is voiced by Rob Paulson, who voiced Raphael from the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles cartoon, along with Pinky from Pinky and the Brain and Mighty Max. Oh yeah, this is good. And his dog Milo was voiced by the legendary Frank Welker. Also in the animated series, there is this cybernetic villain called Pretorius, who was voiced by Tim Curry, who was like a mad scientist type of villain who was hell-bent on getting the mask for himself. And he had a giant, almost Frankenstein henchman called Water, who incidentally was a character from the comic books. 
Also, Stanley Ipkiss and the character Peggy are now best friends, despite the fact that in the movie she totally betrayed him to the bad guys for money. But whatever. It's a very fun, cheeky cartoon that I actually do recommend. Speaking of the character Peggy, that leads me to my next point. Number four, there was an incredibly dark deleted scene. So yeah, in The Mask, there is a subplot where we meet the character Peggy, who we are led to believe is to be a kind, down-to-earth woman, and the movie even hints that she may actually turn out to be the movie's main love interest. But no, she sets Ipkiss up with the main villain Dorian, so she can get a suitcase full of money. This scene leads to Dorian putting on the mask, where he becomes a terrifying beast version of himself. However, in a deleted scene, we see him throw Peggy into a paper pressing machine, actually killing her character off. And the papers that are being printed are now blood soaked red, which is actually a gag which would go on to be used in the Bond film Tomorrow Never Dies. Either way, it's a shocking death scene that you don't see coming, and I can only imagine that this was written when the movie was going to be more dark and violent like the comic book. Number three, there was a mask action figure lineup. Yeah, I kid you not, this existed. There was an action figure lineup based on the mask, and it was freaking awesome! Just look at these action figures! How did they not catch on? Released by Kenner in 1995, what made this lineup so damn weird is the lineup itself is a hybrid of being a lineup of both the movie and animated series, as some of the figures are clearly modelled after characters from the movie, including Dorian, who, of course, wasn't in the animated series, and yet the advert specifically uses just clips from the animated series, and the lineup also featured characters who were just from the cartoon and not the movie. This was one confusing lineup. Oh well, it was still plastic awesomeness, and a shame that they never caught on. Look, Ma! I'm Roadkill! <laughs> Seriously, I didn't know anyone who had any of these action figures. Number two, the mask. Number two, the mask video game. So in 1995, The Mask entered the 16-bit domain with The Mask Super Nintendo game, for all those who needed to relive the movie but in video game format. The plot is pretty basic, it's a side stroller, and you play as The Mask, and your main goal is to stop Dorian and his goons from taking over the city. But what sells it for me is the graphics in the game, and how it even incorporates imagery from the movie. My verdict is, it's not a classic game, but it was a great game to look at. 16-bit eye candy, if you will. Number one, Jim Carrey's dedication to the role. Not only does Jim Carrey play the mask, but he fully becomes the character and engulfs himself into the role and goes all out, giving the part one hell of a big bang. And oh boy, did Carrey go the extra yards for this performance. For example, his giant ass teeth were only to be used in scenes where the mask wasn't talking, on the account that it would be near impossible to talk in them. But not to Carrey! He trained himself to be able to talk complete sentences while wearing the massive chompers. Also, Carrie's flexibility also saved the production money, in scenes where we would see the mask doing weird elastic looking movements. But director Chuck Russell insisted that some scenes that were meant to be CGI were in fact Jim Carrey himself performing, in which he was able to do thanks to his elastic bendiness. And indeed, Carrie's hard work and dedication totally paid off and is what makes the movie so great. Okay guys, that was my look into the mask. I think it's time for a new movie, especially in this day and age where we have superhero movies all over the damn place. And it'll be great if we can get one that's true to the comic books. But until then, the original will always have a special place in my heart as I adore that movie. Anyway, I'm Minty, and somebody stop me from ever seeing Son of Mask. See ya.